Is Tony White leaving us for USC? That's been the news. What about, is there any quarterbacks coming in from the transfer portal? Who's in there? Who's coming out? Where are they going? All that and more coming up right now. Hey, what's up? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central. Thanks so much for tuning in. Right now, let's go ahead and get right into it. Tony White, if you're on Twitter, X, whatever we call it now, um, man, everything started melting down this morning, including myself. I was like, what's go what is going on? So if you didn't know, Tony White has interviewed for multiple head coaching positions, uh, San Diego State. Ultimately, they went a different direction with the uh, offensive coordinator from Colorado. And then uh, Syracuse went a different direction and hired the DB coach from Georgia. Both of those were the two positions that he applied for or interviewed for. I shouldn't say applied for because it's not the same. And uh, who, who he interviewed for and didn't get either one. But then news broke this morning that USC, University of Southern Cal, and Lincoln Riley were hiring Tony White to take over as their defensive coordinator. Now, USC fired their defensive coordinator halfway through the season because they were terrible. And that was the news. And then it was like all over USC um, uh, message boards and all this stuff that Tony White was coming. Well, then literally like within 10 minutes from, oh, he's gonna he's leaving and everybody's like freaking out on Twitter and even a um, uh, local radio station here was even saying this, this could be going down. This is what we're hearing, blah, blah, blah. To in a 10 minute change, a flip on the dime. Nope, he's not coming. And they've actually got somebody else. USC is playing it close to the vest, blah, blah, blah. Everything that I'm seeing on Twitter at this point from USC standpoint is that they are swinging and missing. They have offered multiple people and it, they've been turned down. Now, from Tony White's perspective, could he still take the position? Yeah, but here's why I think it's not, it's not likely the case. And here's why. One, why make a lateral move to another defensive coordinator position? You already have a strong uh, fan base here in Nebraska. You have a you took a, a defense that was ranked 100th last year, whoops, 100th last year, to bringing them to being number 14th in the nation total. That is a massive jump. It got everyone's attention. Why not build on that? If you want a true Power Five head coaching position, which he does, he said that um, in previous press conferences. Then, man, why not stick around where you know you've got your entire defensive lines coming back, including Ty Robinson, Nash Hutmacher, Jamari Butler, among others, those true freshmen that you've heard me talk about in previous videos. All those guys are coming back. Why not continue to build on it? So I think it would just be a, a, a crazy move. Now, should we give Tony White a raise? Absolutely. He should be getting paid more. Uh, USC's um, defensive coordinator was making about $400,000 more a year than what Tony White is making now. But here's the deal. I mean, you go to USC, the taxes there, that, that is a complete wash to what you would pay here. And so that's the other, the other thing too, is like you, they would have to give him a, ma a massive pay increase in order just to truly give him a raise because of just the cost of living out there is insane. Also, the fan base is not as strong. You can talk about USC Trojans, but if you watch their games, it's like going to a high school game in the middle of nowhere. Like it, there, there's hardly anybody in the stands. The, there's way too much to do in LA. And you, I mean, you have a Heisman Trophy winner and a team that was in the top 25, and there was hardly anybody there. So I just think, from a fan base perspective, from a, from just a cost of living perspective, and just what he's built here already in one year, it only makes sense to stay. And it looks like that's what he's doing because what I also saw out there was that um, Tony White and Terrence Knighton are hitting the recruiting trail together. So why would they, if he was leaving, why would he not be, why would he be out on the recruiting trail? So there's that. That's the Tony White news. It looks like he's staying from everything that I'm seeing. And if it if he ends up leaving, don't fret, Husker Nation. I will be sad as you will be sad. But I do think that uh, Matt Rule has other people in line to do still do a great job but that being said as of right now tony white staying it's a good deal so we don't have to jump off a cliff just yet now what about the transfer portal if you didn't hear matt rules press conference 
he talked about how much it costs to go out and get a starting caliber transfer quarterback. And he said a million and a half to $2 million for a starting quarterback in the transfer portal. And that, if that doesn't raise some eyebrows, it definitely raised mine. I'm like, holy moly. Like, I was thinking, you know, a million, just under a million. I mean, but they, I, I don't know. I'm not in the game. I'm not in NIL, like that NIL world. So it makes sense on why some of these guys are sticking around and not going into the NFL just yet because they can make more in college off NIL than they can be in a practice squad guy or whatever. And so it just makes sense that they would stick around. So there's been two names that have kind of surfaced from a Huskers perspective, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that up right now. Um, And that is Tyler Van Dyke from Miami and Will Howard from Kansas State. And here's what it says. This is um, Husker 24-7 reporting it. I mean, not Husker 24-7. 24-7 sports, not the Husker arm. Uh, but it says this, if you can't read it, it says Nebraska projects, to, Nebraska projects to go transfer portal digging for a quarterback after coming off one of the worst statistical seasons offensively in decades under first-year coach coaching staff. Turnovers were an issue at the position for play caller Marcus uh, Marcus Satterfield, whose unit never found its rhythm and scored just 10 points in the season finale with a chance to go bowling. RIP to that season. Van Dyke, who is from Miami, doesn't have ties to the Big Ten or the Huskers, but there's a chance Nebraska will reach out to him. Now here's that last line. I want you to see this right here. Kansas State's Will Howard might be the Huskers' top target, however, sources say so that is big news it is uh kansas state if you did not watch their games which i'm sure many of you did um will howard is a is a very good quarterback and there's a chance it says that he still could elect to go to the to the nfl so we'll see but that makes me excited that sources are saying that the huskers are going to go after will howard now I want to look at, before we go any further into any other news, I want to look at Tyler Van Dyke and Will Howard's PFF grades. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I am a fan of PFF grades. Um, I don't think they get everything right, but I think it gives us a pretty good idea of the type of players that they are. And I have another video that'll be uh, right up here. I'll have a card that suggests so you can see what it is, what like explaining PFF grades. A uh, little bit, but I'm going to go into how they grade quarterbacks here in this video. So just stay with me. So with that being said, let me share with you guys what I am seeing from Will Howard. All right. So here is Will Howard's PFF grades. His total offensive grade is a 77.3. His passing grade, 70.5. And his run grade is 70. Eight, sorry, 78. In 2023, he graded out to a 77.3. In 2022, it was 75. And then 21 and 2020, which he didn't even start, but you've got a 59.3 and a 58.8. Now, why does that matter seeing this? Here's why. You get to see what kind of player he is. From a passing perspective, now now an 80 is is not perfect, but an 80 is pretty unattainable, especially in college, um, because you have to be able to sustain an 80, which is like really, really good for 16 games. And so this these scores right here are for 16 games telling you kind of how he's grading out. And man, that looks that looks really, really good. Um, I mean, his run grade is almost perfect, but for this year, 77.3 as an overall grade. Now, what does that mean? Before I go into Tyler Van Dyke, um, what does that mean? Well, so how PFF does their grading specifically for quarterbacks is they're looking at each play individually and they're looking at accuracy. They're looking at timing. They're not necessarily looking at the outcome. Because how many of you guys know that there's been there? You've watched plenty of football. You know that uh, when a quarterback gets the snap, 
he his timing can be perfect. The pro can be the throw can be perfect. And what happens? Either the wide receiver runs the wrong route and it can be intercepted, or he drops it. it Could be different things that happen. So they're looking at accuracy and is it pinpoint accuracy? Like, is it something that they just fit it into like a phone booth? Like, like it's it is right there for the taking, right? So they're looking at that. They're looking at timing. Um, they're also looking at where they decide to go with the ball, meaning did they make the right decision? Because you and I both know we don't have to be in the huddle to know to see on to see the game, you can see open receivers and then that quarterback decides to throw it into triple coverage, right? And so they're looking at all of those pieces every single play. Now again, go look at my video that I that I have on PFF grading and how that scale goes. And so if you look at 80 is like it, the equivalent of throwing three touchdown passes a game every game. Think of that as an 80, okay? So if he's if he is at an overall grade for 2023 at 77.3, that's pretty incredible. Um from a pass grade, his his total pass grade is a 70.5 and then his uh run grade is a 78, so that averages out to that 77.3 essentially as an overall grade. So Will Howard, great quarterback, super serviceable, right? So then let's look at Tyler Van Dykes. Now, I've watched some of Tyler Van Dykes' uh, games, not all, but being from Florida, I have I watch a lot of Florida, Florida State, and Miami games. And so uh, I'm trying to find where I put it. Sorry. All right, here we go. So here's Tyler Van Dykes. I want you to look at this. Tyler Van Dyke's score for 2023 is an 80.7. Because here's he, here's the other thing that I want you to know. Stats, we can look at stats all day, and stats are good. We want to see stats. We want to look at turnover margin and all that jazz. But I want to know from a great standpoint, because stats don't always tell the story from a completion perspective, right? Like I just pointed out, from a completion perspective, that doesn't always tell the story because drop passes, uh, wide receivers running the wrong routes, you know, that kind of thing. So so that's why I look at PFF grades above stats because they're looking and grading it from every single every single snap. So, but look at this grade for Tyler Van Dyke, 83.7. Now, here's the other thing about Tyler Van Dyke you need to know. Three offensive coordinators over three years, three different offensive coordinators over three years, and he's still got a really good grade. His total offensive grade is an 83.7. Think about that over 12 games. What did I say? Let's think about it from three touchdowns per game being thrown. That's that's really good. So his pass grading is very high. He's not so much of a runner. It doesn't mean he can't run. It just means that's not a part. That's not really part of his game. Think of him like Casey Thompson. That's what you want. Can he do it? Sure. Is he a big guy? Yes. Do you want him sitting there doing it the entire time? No, because that's not his game. He... He isn't a Heinrich Harburg, Jeff Sims. Like that's not his game. His game, as you can see, is a pro style pure pocket passer. Will Howard's also going to be more of a pro style, but as you saw in his grade, he's a better runner. So I think Will Howard is a better fit, but Tyler Van Dyke isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now let's look at 2022. He had a 66.8. Again, different offensive coordinator, 2021, 75.5, and 2020, 71.5. So I think if either one of those guys, now I'm not saying they're, I'm not saying either one that they're coming. I'm just telling you the source that I just saw says that those two guys, the Huskers are, are supposedly looking at. And I think we, both of them would be incredible to have. Now, uh, Matt rule did say in his press conference, he wants somebody either that is just incredible. And I think both of those guys are incredible or a guy who can give them multiple years, not just one. He says, if we're going out and we're paying the money and we're only going to have him from one year, he better be a game changer. If, if not, then I want somebody that, that can develop with the program for multiple years. Now there's a couple of other guys who I'm not, I don't have their PFF grades because they're, they're young and they actually didn't even start, but there's two, two guys that are in the portal that I think are very interesting. One is from NC State, um, and I cannot think of his name off the top of my head. Um, it starts with an M, and it's gone. I should have wrote it down. I apologize. Uh, 
did started or played three different games uh, or did played four games. I apologize. And then did not play his final three games because he wanted to keep his red shirt. And from what I understand, uh, David Dorian, who's the head coach of NC state is not happy about it. And that's a lot of why he hit the transfer portal, but here's why I bring him up. One, he is a dual threat quarterback. He's very highly rated. Here's the other thing. Nebraska was in his top three before he chose NC state. That's why he is interesting. Now here's the other one. Um, Max, and I, gosh darn it, I apologize. The he played against Florida State. He's the for, the Florida backup quarterback. I watched him against uh, Florida State. He had to start due to the starting quarterback getting hurt for Florida, and was really impressed for a young guy, true freshman, plays baseball. So he had a very just a beautiful touch on the ball. He threw some just incredible passes. Is a dual threat but was not necessarily a highly ranked quarterback coming out of high school because his main sport was baseball uh, at the time. But he is uh, also in the transfer portal, also somebody that could I could see the Huskers going after because of what Marcus Satterfield does, wanting that dual threat, but wanting someone that is a more pure pocket passer who has the ability to run. I I think all the all of these guys are good options. And so if Will Howard or, or Tyler Van Dyke decide to go elsewhere, I think two young guys, again, not guys who necessarily have a lot of starting potential uh, or a lot of starting experience, but guys who have started and have and looked good doing it, I think are good potential guys Okay, to battle with Chubba Purdy. So I'm not saying we go away from Chubba Purdy necessarily, but we do have to have a battle. And so that's what that looks like. So. That's what that looks like from the quarterback and transfer portal wor world. Um, who's leaving Nebraska? Well, who we know for sure is leaving is Nick Henrich. Um, and he put out a retirement um, post on Instagram and Twitter. It was very sad, blowing out uh, his ACL against the stinking Braylon Allen overtime trip that didn't get called. That junk still makes me angry. Uh, Big Ten officials, man. Um, but for him to go out like that, um, he's retired completely from football. So we know Nick is not coming back. Luke Reimer, another one not coming back. Um, Ty Han has decided to um, go. He's engaged. He's going to go work uh, back on his farm. Classic Nebraska story. Uh, so he's not coming back. What about John Bullock? We still don't know. I love John Bullock. I, I'm curious to see if he comes back. Um, he's still. We're still waiting to hear on that. And then Ben Scott, Isaac Gifford, uh, Coach Rule, Pointed out both of them said that he feels really good about Ben. He saw Ben working out, thinks that Ben's going to be coming back. Uh, still hasn't necessarily made it official, but he feels pretty good about that. Isaac Gifford, uh, same thing, feels pretty good about Isaac Gifford, but still hasn't made a full-fledged decision. So um, Steve Sipple uh, and uh, Sean Callahan on Husker Online today said that they foresee a handful of Huskers leaving, and that's about it. And only the only reason why those guys would be leaving is due to we are way over the scholarship scholarship amount. And so it's just attrition from that standpoint, not because of anyone's unhappy or anything like that, but because they've just got to make room. And so um, the coaches were meeting with players this week and kind of going over that. But they were like, I Steve Sipple said three, maybe three to five. And that's incredible, especially when you look at Purdue, Indiana, Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State, like there are just multiple colleges that just have guys just leaving in droves. And so that what does that tell you, Husker Nation? That tells you we're moving in the right direction. That tells you with guys like Ty Robinson coming back, Nash Hutmacher coming back. These guys feel like, one, they've got unfinished business, but two, they love Matt Rule. They love this coaching staff. They love football. And we're we're going in the right direction. So keep your heads up. This is a big deal. And make sure if you have not subscribe to the channel, if you would, if you got some, some good info out of this that you want to share at the water cooler later, be sure to like this video and yeah, join the community here. And when football comes back, I will be live streaming the games uh, like I did the last two. So thanks so much for watching this as always go big red and we'll see you later next time. Bye-bye.